Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel and Forever Free Ministries. Glad you could join us. Okay, I've got a question. Does the World Cup 2018 have anything to do with startling end time prophecies? Is there another cup that demands our attention according to Bible prophecy? Stay tuned. So is there a connection between the World Cup excitement and end time Bible prophecies? Just before I jump into this, I want to encourage you to subscribe if you are new. Uh, click on the bell icon to be notified of my future uploads. You don't want to miss any of them. I have many Christian videos and a wide range of topics. Also, I want to send to you of free of charge two colorful and powerful magazines that cover Bible prophecy. All you need to do right now is go to the number on your screen, type the number, text the number on the screen, and the number is 940-222-4445, and you need to first text in the word prayer. You can give us a prayer request and then give me your name and address. And if you're in the United States, I will send to you two colorful magazines. One's called The Day of the Lord on the Second Coming and on the Millennium and End Time Events. And then one is called The, Be the Rest of Your Life. The Rest of Your Life, Everything You Need to Know About the Bible Sabbath. Many colorful graphics in here, very rich content. And I want to get these into your hands simply text the number on your screen 940-222-4445 and then you can type in the word prayer give us your prayer request give us your name and address and we'll get these to you also the book steps to christ also you can request if you would like a stack of rack cards that promote our youtube channel if you would like a number of these just let us know how many you would like of these 10 50 100 as long as you promise to give them out we'll share that with you all right we need to jump right into our topic all right here we go first graphic fifa new world order cup 2018 so number one world cup 2018 the entire planet is right now gripped in a sudden near religious fervor for the world cup 2018 enthusiastic fans and athletes are hoping and praying some like never before that their team will win every four years the world cup captures the intention of the world for an intense month as well-trained men from countless countries kick a ball across a field for 90 minutes the first official FIFA World Cup tournament was held in 1930. So everyone is focusing riveted on the World Cup and focusing on the power rankings. Number two, World Cup popularity. Almost half the world tuned in at home to watch 2010 FIFA World Cup uh, that was hosted there in South Africa. Well, what about the Brazil World Cup in 2014? Well, a Apparently, 3.2 billion viewers, 1 billion alone, watched uh, the final uh, game. So, dominant coverage of the World Cup is now so popular that it has actually surpassed the Olympic Games to become the most viewed and followed sporting event. Wild-eyed fans exhibit their unbridled enthusiasm by painting their faces with distinct allegiance to their country's team. All right, World Cup fans are focusing on their favorite players while sports news reporters and commentators pick their top 10 players that triggers animated and sometimes heated debate and discussion. Uh, Die-hard fans are talking about the latest and greatest shot from star soccer players and Yes, the World Cup 2018 quarterfinals, match dates, teams, and predictions for the semifinals. And yes, even for Pope Francis, soccer is both a passion and a gospel strategy. More about the Pope and prophecy in a moment. Number three, World Cup money. Oh, there's lots of money. FIFA made an insane amount of money off of Brazil's 15 billion World Cup. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus said, For where your treasure is, 
there will your heart be also. All right, number four, World Cup politics and intrigue. Drama on the field and off the field. Many feel that a large shadow is looming over this year's World Cup because of who is hosting it. Putin's Russia. BBC News article, World Cup 2018, Should I Support Russia Despite Putin? Italy's triumph in 1934 is said to be influenced by military leaders seeking propaganda coups. And so at the time, fascist dictator Mussolini was in power in Italy. Mussolini decided to have dinner with just the referee and linesmen say what? Instead of the usual dinner involving players and staff members from both teams on the night before the final. Sounds suspicious to me. Corruption and fascism when politics and the World Cup collide. Don't have time to get into all of that right now. But certainly the game and politics are inseparably linked. All right, so I don't have time to get into the FIFA affairs and investigations over the years. Don't have time to get into that intrigue. Colombian captain, USA Today. Colombian captain blasts American World Cup referee for shamefully favoring England. Oh yes, a lot of drama on the field and off the field. Number five, World Cup for world unity. That's right, United Nations Association in Canada, the Calgary branch, sports and peace. How the FIFA World Cup unites. And so then Sergio Ramos, message of unity yesterday, today, and tomorrow together from Spain. And Marco uh, Materazzi, the secret to winning a World Cup is unity. And so he says that you can win the World Cup only if everyone together is together. And uh, you remember they won in 2006. Oh, so according to the Guardian, and so how the World Cup and soccer helps build unity. So there is a such thing as soccer politics. Yes. So uh, here is Amexia. We are in solidarity with Pope Francis's message for World Cup tournament. So the Pope is right there in the center. And of course, the Pope is uh, very clear and adamant that he supports the World Cup and he hopes that it brings uh, a message of unity and peace among the countries. Obviously, he looks at this as something that can unite countries, politically uh, help them to be more united, new world order, and also to unite religions in some way, shape, or form of cooperation and conversation and communion. Oh yes, the Pope is very much using everything he can in his power to promote a Roman papal version of unity. It's a false unity. We're talking about a new world order. So number six, World Cup is one of the signs of the time. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5 makes it very clear that in the last days, people would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And so indeed, we see the unbridled enthusiasm and the live fan reactions in real time. So is the enemy, I'm asking, I'm just asking, is the enemy of our souls doing everything? Listen, I've come here tonight to say something. Is the enemy of our souls doing everything he possibly can do to divert our attention from studying the end time prophecies of the Bible, about the mark of the beast, about the Antichrist, about the second coming of Jesus Christ, about the millennium, about the scarlet woman of Revelation? So Jesus warned, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day, the second coming of Christ, come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare, a trap on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. So everyone's going to be ensnared except for those who watch therefore and pray always. You must spend time on your knees. You must spend time in talking to God throughout the day. Like I tell my children, talk to Jesus all day, 
and you'll be all right. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to be ready and prepared, what? To stand before the Son of Man when he comes in the sky at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And you can see my videos in which I deal with the second coming of Jesus. And I'll have those links up on the right corner of the screen about the second coming of Jesus Christ and how many will be panic-stricken at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I have another video about preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ. All right, let's keep going. So could it be that while everyone is focusing on their favorite players, they don't have time to study and to focus on the two key prophetic players in end time events, in the final events. The two key players in end events, according to the book of Revelation, is none other than the United States of America. And I have a video, I have videos that deal with the first nation that will enforce the mark of the beast. I'll put a link up on the screen as well. And, uh, and the other player, the Roman papal power, and I have videos on that subject as well. Those are the two key players. Let's keep going. Number seven. World Cup drinking. Oh, there's a whole lot of drinking going on. In 2013, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law allowing FIFA and its partners to sell alcohol at the 2018 World Cup in Russia, lifting an alcohol ban at sporting events in force since 2005. The Bible tells us the wise men, my my daughter's favorite book of the Bible, Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. I used to be an alcoholic when I was a teenager. Thank God, thank God, the Lord Jesus delivered me from that. Proverbs 23, 31. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it is moveth itself aright. In other words, stay away from alcoholic beverages. You say, wow, I have an addiction to alcohol or smoking or drinking or drugs or porn or whatever. I have a video about ways to overcome addictions. And that link will be up on the screen as well. Number eight, World Cup killings. Genesis 6 verse 11 makes it very clear in the days of Noah, there was widespread bloody violence, cruel violence. So, report. 11 sentenced to death over fatal port said soccer riots in um, Egypt. And that was in June 9, 2015. And I was horrified as this was brought to my attention. That if you notice on the left, you have their number seven different events. Remember, once again, the World Cup is held every uh, five years. But I want you to notice here that in uh, 20, uh, let's see here, 1969, Mexico City, Mexico, 2,100 deaths. Peru, Argentina, 318 deaths in 1964. And uh, you can go on down. Here you see one in Egypt, 74 deaths. Don't have time to go through all of that. So number nine, World Cup superstition. The Bible makes it very clear that in Scripture, Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10, it says the heart is deceitful. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 1 Timothy 4, 1 makes it very clear that people in the last days would turn away from the truth. They would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Could it be? that many people are caught up in superstition and false beliefs. The crux uh, taking the Catholic Pulse uh, front cover story here, or cover story, at 2018 World Cup, will Argentina break curse of the Madonna? Apparently not, even though their most popular player, Messi, uh, number 10, uh, was not able to pull it off. And so that was June 9, 2018. And so they believe that there's been a curse of the Madonna. Don't have time to get into that uh, curse of the Madonna that some believe is real. And so number 10, World Cup, Pope and Prophecy. Well, first of all, let's be clear. 
America. Look at the source of this. America, the Jesuit Review. Say what? The what? The Jesuit Review. What the World Cup can teach us about everything. And oh yes, the papal Roman power has, is, is attempting to use everything that gathers crowds and that gathers the world's attention. They are trying to use everything to buttress their power. It's a power grab. So what the World Cup can teach us about everything. Well, the Bible makes it very clear that in the last days, he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right head, right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Could it be that the World Cup is a distraction and a diversion to keep us from studying. Who is the Antichrist? What is the mark of the beast? What does the Bible say about the great tribulation? How can we be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ? How can we make sure to get the seal of God? What seal out of the seven seals are we living in? And on and on and on. What does the Bible say about these end time events? And so, it's Pope, according to Time article, it's Pope versus Pope in the World Cup final that was back in 2014, four years ago, leading up to the World Cup final. Well, what about Pope and prophecy? Well, what cup should the whole world be warned about? What cup should we be focusing on right now? The World Cup? or Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, according to the Bible, she is passing around a wine cup that is making the world go mad and drunk. And so who is this scarlet harlot of Revelation? The devil uses all sorts of distractions, diversions, smoke screens, to keep you from knowing what his end time deceptions are. What's in that wine cup? Is it possible that the World Cup 2018 is taking your attention away from knowing what is in the New World Order Cup of the Antichrist? The Antichrist of 2018. You must look behind the news to see the prophetic news. You must know for sure who, uh, sure if you are getting drunk with the wine cup of mystery battle and the mother of harlots. Listen to what the Bible says in Revelation 17. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Now woman represents in Bible prophecy a church, but this is a corrupt woman, a corrupt church sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. Protestant reformers believe that this woman represents the Roman church. Now, I believe that God has his true people, his true followers, true Christians in all different denominations, Catholic, Protestant as well. We're talking not about the precious, sincere people following the Lord, but we're talking about the institution that is passing around false beliefs and the world is imbibing them and they're getting drunk. And so the Bible makes it very clear when a person gets drunk, they get confused. Many people are experiencing religious confusion about what the Bible really teaches. They're confused. And so on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. I got a whole message coming up on the scarlet harlot. So you don't want to miss that upload when we uh, broadcast that. So that's Revelation 17, three to five. So notice she's the mother and she has daughters who are also, also guilty of preaching and teaching and passing along false teachings, abominations of the earth. Watch out, beware of that cup. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So we're talking about a global, global woman with global impact. And she has daughters that are on the, on the loose. And the Bible makes it very clear. These women of the night, these false um, religious institutions, according to the Bible, 
has a global ripple effect, a global impact, global influence. We're talking about a new world order cup. So the whole world follows and supports the mother of harlots, Mr. Babylon, and drinks from her intoxicating cup of false teachings and practices, spiritual fornication, mixing truth with error. All right. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So this is a bloodthirsty woman guilty of killing, according to history, during the Dark Ages, 50 million people. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Revelation 17, verse 6. So what's in the wine cup of Babylon? Sprinkling and pouring? Baptizing babies by sprinkling or pouring? That's not in the Bible, but it's church tradition. Praying to Mother Mary? That's not in the Bible. Confession to a priest? Claiming that Jesus gave priests authority to receive confession of, to absolve people of their sins? That's not in the Bible. So many church traditions that are prevalent and popular, but clash with the word of God. So you have a choice, truth or tradition. And so there are many other things in the wine cup of Babylon. What else is in there? Well, the Roman papal power, the papacy, the popes, have made changes to the Ten Commandments. They deleted the Second Commandment because it prohibits, God says, don't make images and bow down to them. And so they have Madonnas, uh, images of Mary, images of saints. That's why they deleted the Second Commandment out of the Catechism. But they've made other changes to the Ten Commandments, claiming that God gave them the authority to do so. Daniel 7.25 says, speaking about the Roman papal power, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and zoom in on this, and shall intend to change times and law. So what does that mean, changing times and law? What is the only commandment that relates to times? Notice changing times and law. Changing the what? Time. Well, what's the only commandment that relates to times? the fourth commandment. Did the Roman papal power change the time in which the fourth commandment would be kept? Yes. The Bible says, keep the what day? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Well, they've changed it from Saturday to Sunday. You say, Mark, I didn't know that. Well, notice, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day, Notice, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. It's the Lord's day. That's Saturday. In it you shall do no work. You nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made or created the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that, in, that is in them. He created us and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day. Look on a calendar, Saturday, seventh day. Look in the encyclopedias and dictionaries and even what day the Jews keep today. It's the seventh day, even in Spanish. The name for the seventh day, Sabado, Sabbath. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So God did three things to the seventh day, according to the fourth commandment. God wrote it and he spoke it, these Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Notice, he rested on it, he blessed it, and he hallowed it. That is, he made it holy. So you and I can't make a day holy. God made the seventh day holy, and he says you can work all the other days, but don't work on the seventh day. Of course, the exception would be hospitals and nursing homes and police and fire and so forth, because Jesus healed people on the Sabbath. In other words, it's appropriate to protect people and to bring healing to people, hospitals, nursing homes, etc. And of course, preaching and teaching on the Sabbath and going to church on the Sabbath is what Jesus told us to do. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, what did Jesus do on the Sabbath? He's our example. He went to church. He went into the synagogue on the what day? The seventh day Sabbath, the Sabbath day and stood up to read. If it's good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for Mark Fox, it ought to be good enough for you. Luke 4, 16. So you say, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't think God is concerned about which day we keep. 
Well, how could majority be wrong? Wait a minute. We want the Bible and the Bible only. So this is very interesting. Pope and prophecy, did you know that the Pope relaxes rules about sport, and that would include World Cup, on the Sabbath? You say, well, is he talking about the seventh day Sabbath? Oh no, no, he's calling Sunday the Sabbath. So notice here that um, it's fine to play sport on the Sabbath. And, um, and so notice here, notice the Bible sets out in Leviticus that Sunday should be a Sabbath of solemn rest. But the Vatican has issued new guidance encouraging Catholics to play sport on Sundays as long as they still find time to attend Mass. Sport can bring communities together and be seen as a rich source of values and virtues according to Pope Francis in the report. And so, very interesting, friends, Saturday is the Sabbath, not Sunday. But most people in this world aren't aware of the fact that Sunday observance is an institution of the Roman Catholic Church and is nowhere commanded in the Bible. The late John Paul II, in his encyclical issued in 1998, spoke of the need to restore Sunday sacredness through political action. Oh yes, in other words, hey, come on. We need to legislate and bring into law Sunday rest for faith and family and recreation and leisure. In other words, both for sacred and secular purposes. At one point in this encyclical, John Paul praised the Roman Emperor Constantine for his legislation of the rhythm of the week. This has long been a long-term goal of the Catholic Church for many years to restore Sunday, keeping through civil law. Ready or not, here come Sunday laws, everybody. In this matter, this is what Pope John Paul II said in his encyclical, that is an official document, entitled Dies Domini, Latin for the Lord's Day in 1998. In this matter, my predecessor, Pope Leo XIII, notice Pope Leo XIII in his encyclical realm spoke of Sunday rest as a worker's right, which the state must guarantee. In other words, the workers should have a right to work and for rest in order to spend time with family, go to sporting events and so forth. Look at this, everybody. This is amazing. This came out June 14, 2018. Catholic Herald, the Catholic visionary who founded the World Cup. Oh yes, there's more to the World Cup than the average person is seeing. Inspired by Pope Leo XIII. What? Inspired by Pope Leo XIII? Well, what did Pope Leo XIII say? He said that he wants Sunday rest enforced. Oh, and so the guy that founded the World Cup was inspired by the Pope who said there ought to be a Sunday law. Universal is what I believe the Pope Leo XIII was saying. And so here comes this, this man that was groomed and molded and shaped by Pope Leo XIII all right, Jules Ramey created a tournament that brought warring nations together. You say, come on, Mark, that sounds good, unity. But my friends, we must see beyond the new world order unity and realize what's really going on. I'm all for unity. I say, yes, we need to pray for peace and we need to be peacemakers. But did you know, many are aware, unaware However, that it was this Roman Catholic Jules Ramey, under the inspiration of Pope Leo XIII, who founded the World Cup as the Catholic Herald states that brought warring nations together. All right. In other words, global sports, global unity. And what did Pope Leo XIII want that inspired the man who founded it? Global Sunday. 
bringing global unity. Oh, yes. CNA, not CNN, but CNA, Catholic News Agency, November 17, 2015. If you have the right to work, you have the right to rest, Pope says. The dignity, <coughs> notice the dignity of workers was at the center of an address by Pope Francis on Saturday, during which the pontiff reflected on the connection between the right to employment and the right to leisure. This right to rest, Pope Francis said, above all, refers to, dement to a dimension of the human being which does not lack the spiritual roots and which even you, for your part, are responsible. To put it another way, people who work must take the time to relax, to be with their families, to enjoy themselves, read, listen to music, play a sport, World Cup, but this is being destroyed in large part by the elimination of the Sabbath rest day. What? He's calling Sunday the Sabbath. That's not what the Bible says. Oh, thinking to change times and law. Daniel 7, 25. Friends, we were warned. The Bible told us this would happen. We're living in the edge of eternity. More and more people work on Sundays as a consequence of the competitiveness imposed by a consumer society. In such cases, he concludes, work ends up dehumanizing people. So, when the Pope met with President Trump behind closed doors, they talked about freedom to worship or religious freedom, and he gave him a copy of his uh, climate uh, change agenda, which includes, includes emphasizing the need for Sunday rest. Very interesting. I have a whole video on that about the Trump Pope visit. You'll see the link up on your screen. So the Roman Catholic Church stated that many years ago that the keeping of Sunday by the vast majority of Christians is a sign of the papacy's authority. What is the claimed sign of papal authority? Well, more than a century ago, a prominent Catholic leader made this statement regarding the change of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday during the early Christian centuries. Listen, this is Chancellor of Cardinal Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1895. Listen, of course the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act. And the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Friends, do you believe that the Catholic Church has the authority to change the day of the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? You really believe that? The Bible speaks of another sign that will mark God's true people. God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel tells us that this sign is, quote, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath, not the papacy Sabbath, my Sabbath, to be a sign. A sign. God has a sign. The papal power has a sign. But God has a sign. His sign is the seventh day. The papacy sign is the first day, Sunday. God says his sign is the Sabbath. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Friends, what is really going on? World Cup, and by the way, I will just say this, I'll have a link on the screen. I have other videos on the subject of the Bible Sabbath and about how the Roman papal power thought to change it from Saturday to Sunday. You wanna know more, you'll see the link up on the screen. Finally, World Cup, real spiritual rivalry. You wanna to, want to get ready for the next graphic? <clears throat> the Bible says there's a war between the lamb and the dragon and the lamb wins. My friends, what's really going on? While everybody is focused on the World Cup, let's look what's going on behind the scene. The devil is putting up his last battle, his last war against Christ and his followers, according to the book of Revelation. And that's a key theme that I focus on on my channel. Look at my most popular video as 1.4 million views about 10 things Satan cannot do about the warfare between Christ and Satan. Jesus wins. 
Friends, we need to pay attention to this battle, to this game, as it were, between Christ and Satan. We are in the last acts of the drama. We're in the final moments of this titanic great controversy. While many are caught up in the hysteria of the World Cup, my friends, are you paying attention to the Scarlet Harlot's Cup and making sure that you're not sipping from it? Friends, we must be ready when Jesus comes again. I want to encourage you to join our Facebook groups, Memorizing God's Word Together. Also, we have a Facebook group called Bible Baptism and another Facebook group called The Joy of the Sabbath. Look here, everybody. I want to put into your hands right now these magazines. Right now, look here. I want to put these in your hands. The Day of the Lord. The Day of the Lord and the Second Coming. You need these magazines. They're, they're free, and I want to put them in your hands. You need them. The second coming of Jesus Christ and also the rest of your life. We can only send them to the United States as the supply lasts, as the funds keep coming in and so forth. And please stand with us if you're able to. And you can give in a variety of ways. You can give by simply going to BibleProphecy.info. You can give online. The links will be there. And we have a Patreon account as well. And I want to also get this magazine to you the rest of your life on the Bible Sabbath. And I want to also put into your hands this book right here called Steps to Christ, my favorite little book on getting close to Jesus Christ. And you can let me know how many rack cards you would like so that you can help promote our channel in your neighborhood and among your friends. Do you need five of them, 10 of them, 20 of them, 100? Just remember us. We don't charge anything for this. If you can't, give to support our ministry that's okay if you're able that's wonderful go ahead and text the number on your screen right now there's a number on your screen right now if you text that number you have to text in the word prayer then you can give us your prayer requests and then give us your name and address give us your name and address so that we can get these magazines and rack cards to you 940 Four 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 five, and uh, as you give us your name and address, our staff will get these out to you. And we we consider it a sacred honor and accountability and privilege to bring you truth-filled videos and these live broadcasts. Right now, I want to make an appeal. If you want to say Jesus, Jesus. I want to focus on you. I want to get ready for the end time events. I want to be ready for the second coming of Christ. Just type in Jesus. And you can type this in the chat right now, but you can also type it in the uh, uh, uploaded version. Just type in Jesus, something to the effect, Jesus, I want to focus on you. The world is distracted. The world is diverted from the Word of God. We gotta come back to the Bible. If you wanna say, Jesus, I wanna focus on you. I wanna focus on your Word. I wanna be ready for these end time events. Friends, I want you to be ready when Jesus comes. I want you to be ready. We can spend eternity with Jesus, but we must focus on Jesus Christ. Would you like me? to recommend a church that is teaching what I'm teaching on this channel? There's a reason why we have so many people that are coming to our channel, because you know that I give you the Word of God. If, if you feel that it's not in the Bible, don't believe it. But if it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. If you would like to say, Mark, could you recommend a church to me? Text me that. Don't just leave a comment in the YouTube because many times I give a comment back and many of you don't necessarily see that comment. But the text, when you text that, that is definitely a connection. And if you text me right now, or you can email amazingprophecies at gmail.com, 
and that's in the description box. But if you text the number on your screen, we're going to put that number on the screen again, and we'll just keep it there. That number, text that number, then you got to type in the word prayer, then say, Mark, what church would you recommend in my city? Las Vegas or Sydney, Australia or um, Mexico City or in uh, Okinawa, Japan or wherever you live, uh, Kenya. I don't care where you live. I will be glad to recommend a church for you that's teaching what we're teaching on this channel. Go ahead, text that number 940-222-4445. And once again, you got to text that word prayer and then it'll come back to you and you can go ahead, give us your, your name and address. We'll get the magazines to you. Give us your prayer requests. Let us know if you would like us to uh, go ahead and let you know of some churches we recommend in your area. I want you to know that we love you in the name of Jesus. I want to see you in the kingdom. Time is running out. Remember, only the truth can set you free. Pray for me. We need your prayers. Satan hates what we're doing. Pray for us. We have many powerful topics coming up. Powerful topics. And uh, we're paying attention to the news. There's a lot going on that is uh, things that God said would happen. And so this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus really cares for you. God bless you.